I think the idea that SNC-Lavalin isn't technically competent to do its portion of the LRT Stage 2 project in Ottawa, a $1.6 billion project, is on the face of it absurd. This obviously is a company that has many, has done many mass transit projects around the world from Qatar to Vancouver to Washington, D.C. Uh, so obviously it's got the, uh, the chops to do these kinds of jobs. Uh, but in recent weeks, stories have emerged that it failed to pass the 70% threshold in a technical ranking in the procurement that led to its award of the Stage 2 uh, project. So I think it's important to note that uh, there were actually two levels of uh, scrutiny that were applied to this company and the other two rivals. Uh, one was a, a more general one, uh, which whittled five contenders down to three, and then there was a series of mandatory requirements uh, that were assessed against each of the three companies and they all passed those. These would be things like have they done these kinds of projects before, do they have the right kinds of materials, the, the right kinds of people, and the financial heft. So then they go to a third level of competition which is more detailed and involved dozens of criteria and uh, these are all ranked uh, by a numerical system and there are teams of procurement officials attached to each one of these. And we're talking well more than a dozen key criteria. So they don't always agree. They gather later and then they um, agree on a consensus score. Some might very great, uh, let's say the look of a station at a threes or another might do seven. Uh, so they compromise at five. All of this is rolled up at, at the, uh, the end of the day and scored out of 500. So in order to move on to the next stage, which is the financial ranking, uh, you had to get a 70% minimum score. Now the allegation is that SNC-Lavalin was the only one who didn't make 70%. Even if that's true, and we don't know that, uh, the city, uh, and this is not widely known, the city had within the contract the right to intervene at any stage, basically waive that requirement. Because at this stage, you're talking about a ranking, not a, not a technical competence question. Let's, let's assume the city did that, then they would have been able to open the financial package. And so the weighting for technical and financial was 50-50. SNC-Lavalin clearly was the best contender in terms of uh, the financial package. It was the only one that met the city's budget. So you combine the two, and SNC is the overall winner. The big question I have is, why has the city not simply explained it that way? Um, the only thing I can think of is that it's, it's, it's a difficult sell when you have a company that's already in the political uh, sphere as, uh, I mean, you were, there's a lot of focus on the trial involving uh, corruption in Libya uh, a decade ago. And then if you combine that with the idea that the city intervened to bump up its uh, detailed technical ranking, uh, that's a very tough sell politically. It's not surprising to me that the competitors uh, would have used SNC-Lavalin's vulnerability on the political front to get the story out there. I don't know who leaked it, but it's certainly in the interests of the rivals to have the story out there. Bottom line is SNC is almost certainly technically competent to, to do the second stage of the project. Uh, they were heavily involved in the first stage, uh, so obviously they have a lot of experience with this.